Hey everyone, welcome to our weekly chats. Thanks again for joining me. Um, this week, uh, I've been waiting. I had this idea a couple weeks ago and I've been waiting for this week to talk about it with uh, King Charles III about to be uh, uh, have his coronation to be crowned on Saturday um, in London. Um, I'm going to bring up a little bit of East Aurora royal history. We do have a little bit of it. Um, there are a couple stories, but I'm going to stick to one. Um, there's one actual uh, legend that Queen Victoria actually ate cheese produced from East Aurora, but there's some discrepancy about that and not a lot of proof. But um, that's a story that I can talk about another time. There was also uh, believed to be a Spanish princess who stayed here in East Aurora and they named a hotel after her for a little while. Um, again, not, um, not not proven, and but I'm going to dig a little further about that. Um, so that'll be a whole nother article or uh, uh, history article or program um, to discuss um, in its entirety. But today I want to talk about uh, British royal connection to East Aurora. And one of the questions um, that I get a couple times and that's talked about a little bit is this local legend that the king and queen of England visited East Aurora. Um, and uh, the, the story is that um, it would have been Queen Elizabeth's parents or uh, King Charles' grandparents who came to East Aurora uh, back before World War II, and that's the story. Well, it is true. Um, did they make a visit to East Aurora? We can't call it that. They were actually just passing through. Uh, and the East Aurora Advertiser, again, a great resource for our local history, um, is once again um, the resource that I use to, um, and a couple other historians from East Aurora, um, over the years have used um, to prove this story is true. Um, and in a bit I'll talk to you about, uh, about how it's not just the advertiser that proved this story. Uh, we have a couple people who are, were alive when it happened and actually were there. Um, but uh, it was um, June 7th to June 8th, um, the uh, King and Queen of England, so it would be King uh, George the Sixth and his wife Queen Elizabeth, who, after um, King George the Sixth passed away, um, his wife became the Queen Mother. Many, most of us would remember her in that way with that title. Um, they were uh, taking a tour of England. This was before or as World War II, as um, as the, the our part of the hemisphere was uh, under pressure. Um, during World War II, um, and they made a tour of Canada and the United States, and their reason for coming to the United States, and I believe it was the first time a British monarch had stepped foot on American soil, their purpose was to meet with President Roosevelt and, and, and talk about the war and to um, gain support um, uh, for a, a, a combined effort against um, the adversaries in World War II. So they were in Canada first, and then they had a, got on a royal train. They, that's how they traveled back then. And the train um, between Niagara Falls and Washington, D.C. came right through East Aurora. And so the schedule was out, and everyone knew that this was going to happen, um, and that the, that the king and queen of England were going to pass through East Aurora, and it was going to happen in the middle of the night. Um, and there was great excitement, as, as you would imagine. Um, and uh, the Easter advertiser actually said literally, figuratively and literally half the town came out for this. And everyone gathered along the tracks. There was tight security. They actually had, according to the newspaper accounts, um, had uh, swept the tracks and made sure nobody um, for any obstructions and actually had made sure that nobody could get too close to the tracks and they had guards um, volunteer and otherwise all along the railroad tracks for when they came through. Um, and everyone gathered. What happened was as a pilot train came through first and apparently people didn't know that was the case and got all excited about the pilot train that came through first um, and, uh, and then a second train came through. Uh, and they didn't um, stop, so the royal couple did not come out and, you know, step foot in East Aurora, so you can't really call it a royal visit, but that didn't stop everybody from being really, really excited about it. Um, um, a little royal history for East Aurora. Uh, despite a, a report in the East Aurora Advertiser that some people said they spotted King George 
um, on the western side of the train as it passed through East Aurora. Um, most accounts, and, and it just makes sense, that they would have been sleeping, um, the king and queen, the royal couple would have been sleeping as they passed through East Aurora, and we wouldn't, nobody in East Aurora would have seen them. Um, they wouldn't have been waving from the window or from the back of the train. You'll see some pictures from Canada um, of their tour, and they're on the back of the train waving for a photographer and for crowds, but that didn't happen here in East Aurora. But apparently it didn't matter. Um, and I've heard stories since, so I wrote about this a couple years ago, um, about the royal train that came through East Aurora and all the excitement about it. And a couple people had come out to talk. I think someone actually wrote a letter to the editor of the newspaper um, to say that they remember being in Holland and, and the same thing happened where um, people gathered along the tracks in Holland. But the difference in Holland was that there wasn't a lot of light. So they were actually standing in the dark <laughs> along the train tracks. Um, here in East Aurora, it had been a little more um, suburban. Um, and so they were, they were waiting along um, the tracks to see um, the royal train come through. A second person came to me, and this wasn't as a result of the article that I wrote. It was later on. And we were talking about something, or I had mentioned that I was working on uh, research about this. And she started talking about it. And uh, and I said, oh, do you, do you know the story? Because a lot of people, they may have heard the legend of it, but they didn't ever, ever know that the royal, about this royal train. And she said, oh, Rob, I was there. And I was like, really? And she would have been old enough to be there. So I actually pulled out my little recorder and my notebook, and I uh, recorded her talking about her memories of being a child um, and uh, watching the train go by. She actually, I'll be honest, she said she wasn't quite sure if she was actually there in the middle of the night or if she just remembers all the hoopla about it. Um, but the one story she does remember, which is fascinating, is everybody, um, a lot of people put pennies on the track. And we don't advise that today, of course. But um, back then they put the penny on the track and the and they were hoping, people from East Aurora were hoping that they put the penny on the track, that the royal train would come through, and then they could go back later and collect the pennies or and have a penny um, that had been squashed uh, by the royal train, and that it would be a souvenir um, of this train that went through town. The only problem was, and she pointed this out, was that everybody was disappointed because that pilot train went through, squished all the pennies, and then by the time the royal train came through, all the pennies were gone. So the royal train didn't um, didn't uh, uh, leave the souvenir penny. It was the pilot train. Still a neat souvenir, but not the actual train that the king and queen were riding on. So she said everybody had this grand plan to have these souvenir pennies, and um, it got foiled by the, the pilot train that came through first. Um, so this wasn't the only um, famous train that has come through East Aurora. There was a similar yet more somber um, reaction to the McKinley funeral train that had come through East Aurora. Um, same path from Buffalo down to Washington, D.C., um, after McKinley was assassinated in um, in uh, um, in 1901 at the Pan Am, interestingly, we have a photograph of that train. We have a photograph of the McKinley uh, funeral train, but we don't have a photograph um, or any photo evidence, at least I know of, of the royal train coming through. And again, it would be probably a little bit harder to take a picture in the middle of the night of the train coming through. I don't know if no one thought of it or. Um, or there just wasn't the capability to do that. That was 1939. So that's our little bit of royal history here in East Aurora in anticipation of the coronation this weekend. Um, uh, I will be, uh, the Town Historian um, Facebook page will be posting the uh, some more um, interesting parts of that story. If you want to read the whole story, we'll be posting that later in the week. Um, but it is, a, it is a true uh, Royal History of East Aurora. Some people put it in the local legend category, but be thanks to our um, historical resources, the East Aurora Advertiser in particular, and personal uh, remembrances, uh, those are important too, oral history, we know that, that it was true and that the King and Queen of England came through East Aurora. Don't know of any other time that there's been a monarch in East Aurora, so this is a pretty big deal. Um, so uh, we put that as uh, part of our Royal History um, probably the only <laughs> royal visit, quote unquote, to East Aurora. Again, thanks for joining us each week about these wonderful topics. Um, again, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section or 
or uh, send me a, a, a private message. I'd glad to get those too if you have any ideas for topics. Um, and um, again, I just a little caveat for these videos. They're uh, I do them on my own. They're not this page um, is not part of my job as historian. Not connected to the town um, officially in any way. Just something I do on the side to chat with you all about local history. Again, thanks for joining us and enjoy the coronation on Saturday. We'll see you next time.